Yum, yum. What's up, gang? Uh, it's been a bit, but I wanted to show you some progress. Um, master rigging, as it turns out, is hard work. <laughs> So um, I'm almost done, actually, with all the master rigs, and I will be able to pull all the pieces together. Uh, soon I will show a video of it in action, uh, as promised. But I wanted to show you some things that are, that are simple, quote-unquote simple, um, but fun, uh, reusable, and uh, deceivingly complex. So the eye, the teeth, and the tongue rig, um, these, these pieces typically get reused over and over, character to character. Um, you don't do a lot of adjustment. For instance, once you have the eye rig doing what you want it to do, you'll change shading, you'll change default shapes, but usually the shaping is done in the rigs and the shading can be done, you know, uh, drag and drop for the most part. Uh, the teeth, again, very rarely change. Obviously you have a character with a big giant mouth, a dog or something, you're, gonna, you're going to have a new rig for that. But if you're talking about human characters, a lot of the times it's um, a bit of asymmetry maybe, but you can use the rig to introduce those. Um, and then the tongue rig, uh, again, for human characters, it, typically you just take the same geometry, reuse it over and over again um, so that you don't have to rig it more than one time. And for you guys, when you get the RMC, you're going to get these rigs too. So you'll be able to reuse them uh, all over the place. All right, so eye rig. Um, at its base, it's, it's a ball, right? <laughs> it's just round spheres that point at things. Um, so we have uh, your, your general kind of point at rig. You can take um, individual um, eyes and, and move them. Uh, you can parent these things to elements in the scene so you can get eye tracking happening. And the dynamic parent stuff with compensation works really well. So it's pretty easy to shift and, and move things around. Um, you can also, if we go like this, and now I'm going to bring up the uh, rig control here. You can fade um, this. So you can say, hey, I don't want, in this case, the left eye. To, to follow along. I can, I can fade that out. Um, and you can also um, do that for both eyes. There is a, an eyes thing. So let's go here. Actually, I'll open that up so you guys can see it. Um, I don't have a pickable for the, for the middle part because that gets done. That's actually, there'll be a little space on the, on the center of the forehead between the nose that you click on to get this control here. Um, but this allows you to move both eyes up, both eyes over, or cross the eyes if you want, including fading. So um, pull this guy up here, and then you can pull the fader down. So you can do it on the eye level or the one if you want. Um, so that's that. Um, then, then where the eyes get kind of interesting and tricky. So if we have, um, make sure, you know what, let's do this. Let's reset all of this movement so that we're looking at everything rounded. Undo. Undo, it's the undo dance. Okay, so sphere, but obviously eye is a complex thing. You've got iris, you've got sclera, you've got um, the pupil, you've got the, especially with cartoon characters, you want to be able to squash and stretch these things, and you don't necessarily want everything to distort in the same way, so they're deceptively simple. Um, so for instance, if I wanted to um, increase the iris, right, you want to be able to do this and not change the pupil size. You also want this iris growth to happen and then pull back along the shape of the eye because I'm showing the sclera here, but there's a cornea that goes over it for shading purposes. Um, it just because I don't have it shaded, it'll block it, but give you an idea, right? So you can pull this up like this, even though the, the eye itself would go around. Um, then you can play around with the pupil growth and adjust it. So if you want to do like a really gigantic pupil eye thing, um, you can dish the pupil. You can pull this up and back like that. Um, and they all play nice together. Now, you can always break it, right? So if you pull things down too far, you'll get weird, unnatural um, things, but that's fine. I, I am of the uh, philosophy that, or of the opinion that I don't put bounds on anything. Um, let the animators go crazy. Let, let them break stuff. Don't let these controls get in the way of the performance that they want. Then when we hit a wall, when we hit a breakage, we work together as a team to go, okay, do you want to get that shape a different way? In this case, you know, you, you really want to get the pupil that's really big and whatever, then I can add some controls or some um, fine tuning so that when they do pull the iris really big that I can make the pupil not collapse that way. So you'll see that with these rigs, when you get, get, when you get your hands on them, there's almost no stopping the control. I'm, I'm never, nothing ever stops on its own. It's, all, it's up to the animator to do the stopping. Um, anyway, so we've got this. Um, and then, of course, we can rotate the eyes. That's pretty straightforward. We saw that already. But how about sizing? So 
obviously if we go here and we make the eye bigger, no problem. But with a squashing and a stretching, which a cartoon character is going to do, if you scale this up, you'll see I don't want that to change. I want to keep the iris and the pupil, let me turn off highlighting here, um, to stay rounded. So now if you squish the eye down, now granted you squish the eye like this and you've made it big, you're going to get some breakage. But a lot of times these things happen like that. And, you know, it's just boom, and then a big movement and a big expression or something. And, and it's not going to break like that. Or the breakage will just be not visible as you're moving through the uh, animation. So anyway, you want the ability to be able to do that. But then size works uniformly. So you can always size things up evenly, but squashing, stretching, and everything else can be done um, without, uh, without worrying about it distorting. So that's cool stuff. Um, and then, you know, you can move everything up and down. <laughs> now, what's interesting is this squashing happens, the, ro the rotation space will happen, right? So if we do this and you'll rotate it up, you'll see that even though I'm here, let's do something more drastic, right? And I start rotating it up, um, it stays in that space. If I rotate it over, it stays. It's, it's, you'll see it starts to get a little funky when you go over here like that because it's, it's taking that thing as a, as a rigid piece and moving it along that rotational space. But again, when you're doing these squashes and stretches, it's almost never visible. And if it is, we'll tweak it. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's, that's the eye rig, which is deceptively complex. Um, neat, though. Um, it's fun making these kind of rigs. Um, and then for, for you guys, um, you'll just get to be able to use them. You won't have to think about it. Um, we're going to cover how to do it and, and how to build them, obviously. All right, so eyes rig. Let's go to the teeth. So teeth... Again, it's one of those kind of deceptively simple rigs. Obviously, if you want to be able to lift the, the teeth up and down, you can see I've got some channel handles here. Um, I may do a whole video actually on these channel handles because I've actually layered them in a way that's really nice and keeps it all nice and compact. So, you know, your left and right versus a twist versus a um, rotate versus a, uh, a bend. You can see all these pieces are... And this is the twist. They're all they're all nice and compact. So once you learn what these things do, animators can just click and go. Um, you can turn them on and off too. I've got a visibility channel, so if you want to um, go here and let's turn on the rollovers, um, and you want to bring up your channel list, you can. You don't have to use these. You can just turn the handles off um, either at the rig level or the individual piece level. But anyway, fun stuff. Um, we can move all these guys up and down. Where, where it gets really fun though is when you think about how, um, how teeth sometimes, you know, you'll move things up and down. Um, so let's say we move this down, but we wanna grow the teeth. We can, we can play with the teeth. This is the upper one, um, you know, so you can adjust your teeth like this. If you guys remember Ball Man, we you know, did all kinds of fun stuff with that. Um, but then there are a lot of times, especially in, a, again, a cartoony character where you want to deform the teeth to be visible in a way that makes your silhouette look nice, but not necessarily realistic. So there's a lot of bends that happen where you want to be able to do this. And let's do the, um, let's do the teeth all. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we want to be able to bend this, these teeth, um, you know, bend them to the side. Um, twist them and stuff depending on on what you need but where it gets real fun is when you want to fan these guys out so you can literally take all the teeth and flatten them out so if you make a big grin or something like that and then you can you know uh, you know <laughs> do that kind of stuff so i mean i love order of operations is such a great thing <laughs> i love that you can really tune these things and and do this fun stuff so you know it can play around that way or i can uh, go to this and 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 bring the teeth down and um, there's, you can shift and slide them around, um, push them forward and stuff. Now it's kind of happening inside this fanned bend space. So, uh, it doesn't, it can be a little weird, but anyway, uh, so that's the teeth rig, fun stuff. Um, and then last but not least the tongue rig, another one of those, um, deceptively simple, uh, rigs. And actually I'll crack this one open here in a second and show you, um, I'll turn off rollovers. So just, this is what an animator will see. In the scene, uh, if we want to get really minimal, you know, they want to work in there. Um, maybe there's some key commands to f hide or unhide the, the channel handles. Um, but you go, all right, I want to I want to bend my tongue upward. I want to bring it down like this. 
um, pull through and then, you know, play around with pulling the tongue through the space. Um, let's say I want to thin out, um, oops, that's the wrong one. Um, thin the, the tongue out a little bit. And then we want to do that curl where the tongue curls up. Uh, we can play around with the tip, bring this down. We can play around with making the length or the width of the tongue. Um, all of these guys are, uh, you can swing them out and rotate them up and do all kinds of fun stuff. If I want, I can um, scale the length of the tongue. We, obviously, we can move the whole thing around, twist the whole thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's like it's a really fun dynamic rig. It's it's nice to actually see some results. <laughs> I've been building these rigs with with nothing in the scene for like the last six weeks, so it's just really nice to see stuff moving around. Um, but anyway, um, and actually, let's turn this on now. Um, the uh, there's some some fun things here. Let's turn here. So there's there's always going to be more controls than you have um, visible. Um, with, I mean, you can't have a channel handle for everything that you want to do. Um, so, for instance, I've got this idea of a, a master twist. So you can you can twist the whole tongue um, through the deformer space, and then you can fade it off to the tip. You can see it kind of lining up that way. So, um, but I didn't really find an a, an easy way to to put that in there without the control starting to get really cluttery and stuff. But anyway. So uh, last but not least, let me show you a little bit of the complexity. And you can see how easy that is to sort of manipulate. Um, good rig design. Um, try The whole goal is to remove the complexity and let the actor, the animator, move things around and not really think about how it's happening. Just get the shapes and the performance they want. But check this out. This is fun stuff. And then we'll, we'll finish with this. Um, so tongue rig madness. Here's, here's the tongue rig assembly. <laughs> and oh yeah, there's a billion things in here. Um, but it's all it all makes a lot of sense. And all of these pieces will be um, part of the uh, the RMC. Is I keep building these little helper nodes to to solve particular problems. And and as I get through here, it becomes a more drag and drop type experience. So for instance, you know we've got the tongue tip bend, and then the tongue tip translate. Um, then the squash and stretch for the tongue. Uh, then we've got the left and the right curls. That's how we get the curls up. Um, a multi-bend, that's what does in here. Um, and then uh, a base length, scale, rotation, and translation. So all of these are very simple. And you go, well, gosh, Rich, it translates just a single effector. No, it's not. <laughs> because, yes, if I, I mean, you saw how early on I created a lot of these prototypes and got these things working. But, um, the problem with the prototype is it's not production ready. It, you can make something move, but do you have the control to be able to move it consistently? The control to change dynamically if it's a small or a large item, or adjust sensitivity so the animator can move the mouse in a way that makes sense and it's fluid. And all of that stuff gets into, all right, considerating, or considerating, new word, considerating, consideration, considering <laughs> um, where your target is gonna be. So. Even though this is a translate node, it has the ability to invert what X, Y, and Z is so that when I move something in the positive, the animator thinks that is a positive direction, which could be a negative X or a positive X, depending on how this thing is aligned in the scene. Um, every rig has a character scale factor, a distance sensitivity. Distance sensitivity is a long way of saying default unit. You go, well, why didn't you say default unit? I don't know. <laughs> Should I? I call the distance sensitivity. Um, and then you've got a scale factor, which allows you to tune your value range to something that feels natural in the scene. Um, and then in these guys, if we crack these open just a little bit, you see that I've got individual um, weight containers for each axis. So by default, I have all, so X, Y, and Z. But if I wanted to have a different weight for just the TX or the TY, I could. And the way weight flow works is that if you put this in in the right order, as if I add weights to TZ, it'll override whatever the all weights were and give me a specific result. And this idea of, of overlapping and overlaying weights throughout allows you to take the entire rig. So in this case, to make this rig work, you scale the rig into place, you add all the points to the tongue to the root weight container, and you're done. It's working. You don't have to touch any of this stuff. But it's here so that if you ever have a special case, a special need, you can go in make a modification and get a specific result that you need. So anyway, long video, but uh, it's been a while and I wanted to show you guys what's going on. And uh, I find this stuff, it's, it's super satisfying to see all this stuff happen and, and ha 
uh, come together. So anyway, eyes, teeth, tongue, progress is ongoing. Hopefully soon I will have a full face rig to show you with, I'm not going to tell you who, um, but I've got a, a custom mesh that was built that will be part of the training that was modeled by a very good friend of mine, an amazing artist, and uh, I think you guys are going to really dig it. So anyway, uh, later on, gents and ladies and everybody.